In this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed to Oklahoma to visit with Taylor Smith and Gunnar Womack. Some of the bucks in this episode might seem familiar because Gunnar shot the Oklahoma state record in 2019 and his buck about broke the internet that year. So you get to hear the story of that buck, you get to check out some other great Oklahoma whitetails and hopefully you guys enjoy it, let's go. Hey guys, come on in. I'm Gunnar Womack, this is Taylor Smith and we're gonna show you a few of our deer that we've shot the past couple years. It looks kind of weird because uh, all our deer aren't hanging up right now but between our cabins and stuff uh, we've we've had them kind of dispersed out so we got them kind of in a hub right here to show you guys a little bit. I'm gonna start over here with some of my dad's stuff. Um, this was one of his earlier bucks. I mean he's pretty nice deer it only goes up from here but heck of the day we didn't have a whole lot of bucks and this was it's a pretty nice deer for his time so he's pretty excited about that one. Moving on to his next one this one's probably the biggest deer he's ever shot. About a mid 170s deer. He came off the same place as my big deer two years prior. What's really cool about this deer is uh, he had seen him like three or four times and he actually shot at him once and half the powder and his black powder gun went off and he barely pierced the skin on him, shot him perfect. But uh, he ended up running off the field. He found a little bit of blood and was hoping he'd live and he ended up living. And uh, he ended up shooting him in rifle season, which is pretty awesome. Got him down then. And this next buck right here was one of my uh, bigger rifle bucks at the time. Um, <laughs> this one's a pretty cool story. We don't really have any hunting stories that aren't kind of funny or kind of cool. Um, we ended up walking out of our stand. Dad and I crawled down and we look out in the field and it's like two or three minutes from shooting light. Nothing was on the field when we crawled down. And uh, what ended up happening was he ended up walking out and my dad was like, hey, can you get on him? And I was like, oh, I'll try it. And I got down on my knee and I tried to get on this deer. And uh, I couldn't get on him, I kept shaking. I was young and I just, I just couldn't get on him. I was getting buck fever. And um, I ended up getting on my stomach and uh, I ended up shooting him and I dropped him in the middle of the field and we ended up going crazy that day because of how crazy the story was because we were literally seconds from walking out of that place. This one right here um, was my first decent, you know, mature rifle buck. And uh, I had to wait two weeks to go get him because he went and laid down in a buffalo wall or out in a pasture and uh, we couldn't find him. What's really cool about him is this, this little beam coming out right here, we call him Dagger. And um, we hunted him for so long. We hunt a lease, it's about three miles away from our house and we hunted him. I mean, we were hunting him pretty hard early in the season and uh, we ended up seeing him behind our house actually that night after we hunted him that first time, which is kind of cool how far they travel. But uh, yeah, that was one of my first big rifle bucks. This one here, this is my first buck. Um, what's kind of funny is uh, I had about 130 inch deer in front of me before and it was a little snob, I guess, and I told dad he wasn't big enough. And uh, this sucker came out, you know, the next year and I, I couldn't handle it anymore. So I, I took him out, dropped him on the first shot. What was cool also about this deer is my dad wasn't even with me. He was, he was sick and he wasn't gonna go, so my grandpa took me out. Well, he went on the next field over right next to us, he was just trying to listen. And he ended up creeping up to our field to try to listen to see if I shot my first deer. And as soon as I shot it, he comes sprinting around the corner at me, which is uh, it's pretty awesome, pretty cool. But this is really my first buck. This one right here is a cool little deer that my dad shot, not little. He's pretty proud of this deer. I don't even think I know he shot this deer when I was younger, he didn't tell me because I was hunting him. <laughs> and then he, he shot him and like a couple weeks later, he pulled up and uh, I opened the freezer and I was like, what the heck, there's a buck in here. And uh, he's like, oh yeah, I shot that deer, I'm sorry. He felt so bad, but I was like, why, why are you saying you're sorry? You know, I love it, yada, yada. But that was a kind of funny story about that deer. These two deer are, uh, like I said, I don't have a story about a deer that's not kind of cool. This one, um, we were sitting in a ground blind. We'd seen him that night, or the night before, and we got out there that morning and uh, right on the edge of our property, we set up a little pop-up ground blind. Well, it's about mid-morning, it's uh, right on the edge of the rut. My dad sneezed and he kind of tried to play it off like it was a snort wheeze. This, this, uh, this buck came from the, our fence line, right on our fence line, he came sprinting up to our fence line, was just, just trying to hawk whatever made that snort wheeze. And he jumped that fence and was walking around trying to find what made that snort wheeze and I stuck him and he ran like a mile, I think, and we, uh, 
we had to go call neighbors and stuff, and we ended up finding him, but that was a really cool story. This one's one of my dad's bucks. I wasn't with him when he shot it, but he told me he stared at it for two hours before he shot it. He doesn't shoot anything that's not either huge or about to keel over and die because of how old they are. But uh, this one's a pretty neat little deer. He's got some, he's got some character to him. He, uh, he shot him perfect right through the heart and he still ran half a mile. I don't know, it's, it's something about they know how to get in places and just they just got a will to live over there at our lease. But this last year right here for this time is my grandpa's claim to fame, his first uh, crossbow kill he's ever killed. He killed him like two or three years ago um, at a place that we no longer hunt. But uh, my dad had seen him that day, and he, uh, like I said, he doesn't shoot anything that's not about to keel over, or he just, he just won't do it. He pulls out his phone and videos this deer walk across his stand about 30 yards. He's like, look at this big deer, like whispering to us. And uh, he ends up calling my grandpa, and he's like, hey, there's a big deer out here. Come shoot him. He's like, you know, come out here and hunt him. That night, my grandpa sees him about... 40 yards and sticks him. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome looking deer. But Hey guys, I'm Taylor Smith. And uh, we just went through Gunner's deer and uh, we're gonna do his big deer next. But uh, I'm at Gunner's house. We uh, kind of do a little film group. And uh, let's go over some of my deer. Here's one my dad shot. And uh, when he shot him, he really didn't know what he shot. Uh, it happened real fast. And he, all he could tell me is he shot a backwards pronghorn deer. And when we got there, he was all gray. And uh, when we send his tooth off to get aged, he came back eight and a half. Uh, pretty, he's not really big, but uh, you really don't see that. Almost a double drop time kind of deal in deer. This one has a funny story. So I finally worked my way up to where I could shoot my first deer. And I uh, proved my dad through gun safety and be able to aim and hold the gun myself that I could finally shoot my first deer by myself. And uh, we were in the stand together. And I was getting kind of late, and my mind when I was that young was kind of, kind of like a goldfish. I was losing my focus. And uh, we have, uh, we're overlooking a food plot to our left, and to our right is this area of thickets and just native grass. And uh, I could just see this white thing just bobbing through this thicket. And in my little kid mind at the time, I was like, oh, wow, a butterfly, you know? And I was like, why is it out here in 32-degree weather, you know? And I'm like, I'm barely out here right now. And uh, I, actually, I was seeing this as he was walking, and when it came out, I froze, and all I could say was, Dad, big deer. Well, uh, the muzzleloader was right here in front of me, and in the moment, my dad grabbed the gun, cocked it back, and shot, and smoke went everywhere, you know, and it cleared. And uh, about the time it cleared, my dad looked at me and started apologizing, and I realized that I was supposed to shoot. So that's the story with this deer. Um, the year following, uh, actually, the year following, I actually shot my first deer, which it's not here. Um, it's... I didn't want to drive and get it. It's a little too far. So uh, then uh, the, kind, the property we hunt, all these deer came from the same 160 acres, which is uh, pretty unheard of, really. We've hunted the same 160 acres since about 2007. And uh, our wall consists of about 15 deer that are over 140 and uh, multiple deer like this one. I mean, we probably have 15 to 20 of these that's in our barn. But uh, when we first got this place, this was the first deer we ever took out of there uh, that was this big. And we kind of knew from there that we were onto something. From there on out, I mean, we stuck with the same plan and it's paid off. Uh, my brother and dad have a few more bigger deer because they've been in this. Uh, they've been in hunting longer than I have, of course, because my brother's older than me. Um, this was my first big deer. Um, this was a shed. He's a two and a half year old. And uh, I watched him till he is five and a half. Um, take note, he does look small in the neck. This isn't the actual form or hide. Um, I sent it off to get shoulder mounted, and it came back a European mount. And I actually went to taxidermy school and learned how to do my own deer, and this is the deer I did at taxidermy school, so I found it a replacement hide. But uh, this deer is five and a half. Really nothing to, like, spectacular, but uh, he has a lot of goofy splits right here and here and on his eye guards. So this is, when I shot this deer, I was kind of like, all right, I just need to keep being patient and I'll be able to build a wall to hang them all on. 
it was about three years later. I went on a dry spell and then I shot a nine point and uh, he's just about like this nine point right here on the ground that I showed you guys. And uh, then I, I went on a year dry spell, shot the nine point and then two years went by and uh, we knew there, this deer was in the area. We had him up until he was uh, five and a half. Six and a half years old, he uh, completely disappeared. Never got one picture of him, never saw him in velvet, anything, never found a shed. I ended up putting my first and only muzzleloader kill. Uh, I actually got it recorded. Um, there's a lot of unique stuff about this deer. Uh, when he's throughout the years we did have him, he kind of had a, you know, your typical four point, and then he went to a five point, and then this year he's a six point. And his other, his left side always mirrored this side. However, when he turned seven and a half, when I shot him, he kind of threw some weird turkey foot looking stuff. And uh, right here, the mass, I mean, it's about as wide as my hand. And his bases, you know, his true Coke can bases. They're not what some people call, they're actually Coke can bases. But uh, when I shot this deer, I decided to hang it up and uh, I bought a bow and I've been bow hunting since. Since I'm a taxidermist, I just don't really know what I want. So uh, I've just had them hanging around and I uh, put them on a form thinking that's what I wanted. And uh, throughout moving, he fell over and he broke. So uh, is this a skull cap? But uh, I think I figured out what I want. So I'm gonna get him up mounted and I wish I had him mounted for you guys to see. Now that you guys have seen some of my family deer and uh, some of Taylor's deer, uh, I'm here to show you now my claim to fame right here, this dude. This is actually my first archery buck. What's really cool about him is we had him for three years on camera and we just kept watching him grow, which was super cool. My dad had actually seen him the year before when he was like, I think he was like 150, 160 inch deer that year. And uh, he had broke off like the top of his antlers all the way across. And so it made it easier for my dad to, to pass him, which of course, like I said, my dad won't hardly pull the trigger on anything, but he, uh, we had him for three years. Um, what's cool about him is he kind of primarily set on us. The neighbors didn't really know we had him. They'd made seen, they, I think they seen a picture later, like right at the end, but he was primarily on us. We held him, which is pretty cool. And uh, on the day of the hunt, I got in the stand at like five o'clock because I had work and I had to weed eat a 200 yard fence line. And uh, I, I kept texting Taylor. I was like, hey, you know, should I go? Should I go? And he's like, dude, if I have a deer like that, I'm going. It's like, okay, I'll try to sneak in there. I got in at like 5 o'clock. Uh, like 10 minutes later, deer started coming out. I saw a bunch of my big deer that night, but I was dead set. I was hunting this dude. I hadn't seen the 8-point. That was the only other deer. We had a big 8-point out there. That was the only other deer I was going to shoot. And I uh, had a couple of nice, mature deer out there. And then these two uh, young bucks were kind of messing with the doe and he comes running out with his head down like nah that's my doe you know he came out he was mad he was fired up he came out with his head down I was like holy cow 40 yards him standing there I was like holy cow that's him I had this really tiny shooting window and I was like oh, I gotta take it you know this deer's I might may never see this guy again who knows so I go to draw back and I'm about to draw back and he runs into the timber I'm like oh gosh I'm done I'm never gonna see him again, you know. That's that was my shot, and then he come busting back out at about 25 yards, and he stood broadside. I had to maneuver my way around a tree because he had come across my stand, the back of my stand, and I had to maneuver my way across the tree and get around it. And I got halfway drawn back on him, and he looked up at me, and I had to kind of sit there and let it down. And then he was like hawking me, and then he put his head back down. And I got my full draw on him, and I kind of looked up, and I looked down my sight. I was like, ah, oh, I can't miss, can't miss. And I was like, ah, oh, no one's going to believe me if I miss, yada, yada. I got him. And I sit there, and I look one more time. I was like, <sighs> slap, hit him perfect. He ran about 20 yards and died in our brush hogged road. And I started calling all these people, and my dad first, and then Taylor. I, uh, <laughs> when I called Taylor, uh, we had a big eight point out there, like I said, and uh he thought I said eight point. I was like, hey, I, you know, I killed that eight by eight. This, you know, I'm freaking out. And he goes, oh, you know, awesome. I was like, okay. That wasn't the, uh, you know, reaction I thought I was going to get. But, you know, whatever. And uh, he pulls up. My, my friend Tanner was in front of him. He heard me, so he got there on his four-wheeler. He pulls up, and he opens the door, and he's like, that's not the eight point. What are you talking about? 
I was like, I said eight by eight, and, he, and then immediately it was just like, it was, you know, it was crazy. It was like a kid on Christmas morning because they knew he, I mean, they knew he was out there. Taylor and I had been, you know, talking about it, trying to, it was kind of like half a team effort. I mean, we were trying to figure out how to get this deer down. And uh, when I, whenever he went down, it was like a, it was awesome. Everyone was so, so pumped. I got hugged, you know, we were hugging. It was awesome. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. But we get back here to my parents' place and we go across the road because he has a skin and pole. And we go over there, and our neighbor comes around the corner, and he's like, huh, you guys got a lawyer? It's like, oh, I haven't really thought that far yet. Because at the time, I didn't, you know, I didn't just look at him and think, oh, record, you know, record breaker. I knew he's a big deer. You know, trust me, I knew he might make a few, you know, heads turn, but I didn't, it just didn't cross my mind. It wasn't what I was, you know, trying to do. It was just big, big mature deer. I wanted to kill him, so. But, uh, yeah, he ended up being the state archery record by an eighth of an inch, which is crazy because he green scored well over the archery record. And then after the 60 day dry period, he shrunk like five, four or five inches and barely beat it by an eighth. But you no, know, we got it. But yeah, that's him.